Greetings, this is Greed. And today I want to talk about something near and dear to my heart. Being alive. Being alive, one has to face certain realities. You have to eat, you have to drink, and you have to find some sort of shelter. Now, procurement of food is an ongoing thing. And there's quite a few ways you can do it. If you really want to, you can go out and hunt and fish and trap and be kind of fulfilled. And you have to cook that food most of the time so you don't get sick. But we also pursue clean drinking water. Now, a lot of you never had the thought to think about this. You've grown up on city water. Or well water. But your first go around with unpurified water, and you will know the extreme importance of having clean drinking water. Humankind has not always had this ability to procure clean drinking water as a species. Though the rise of civilization, one of the main benefits of civilization has been clean drinking water and a relatively stable food supply. And if you don't want to be constantly sick, you need shelter. Now, if you don't want to follow the early example of going out in the woods and living in a tent or a burrow, or some other such natural means. Uh, you can come and live in society where everything costs money. Now, if you're lucky, you'll have a house given to you by some relatives because they saved their money and passed that on to their descendants. If not, you're going to have to pay for it, which means you need a source of income, which means you need a job. Now, Let's say you're young, okay, and you're trying to figure out what you need to do in order to secure this most mysterious form of things called money. Well, it's very simple. You need to gather unto yourself skills that people find desirable, okay? This can be trade skills like carpentry, plumbing, roofing, concrete work, brick work, electrician, HVAC. You can get into the automotive industry and work on cars for a living. To various degrees of financial success. Those are some options in the trade areas. Now what all these options have in common that can make them particularly attractive is consistency. Everyone needs them. Let's face it, everybody needs them. Now, they also have varying degrees of financial income. Uh, as an auto mechanic, you will make a reasonable amount of money, but if you work at a high end, say, import shop, you'll make a lot more money. Very simple. Okay. But you can also uh, push yourself into more executive trades, such as being a lawyer. Um, those are interesting jobs. You can go into the finance industry and work in accounting, which can also pay you some money. All right. But the point is, you should realize that you need something that people find value. In. especially if you're going to pursue higher education there is no point in spending money on a diploma or a degree if your goal is to make money if you're going to devote that time to a degree that no one finds any value in okay now there's nothing wrong with pursuing education for personal interest it's perfectly fine 
but if you're pursuing uh, financial uh, well-being, it behooves you to pick something financially vital. Okay. Now, let's say you just want the training. Well, this this is something I recommend. Obviously, put in plenty of job applications. All right. But, if needs be, go work at McDonald's. Okay? Now, before you storm out kicking and screaming and say, fuck you, and this is some bullshit, no. Hear me out. Okay? Something very important you learn at places like McDonald's. One, well, there's two things. One, you learn how to work with other people. Two, you learn how to work with customers. Those are two extremely important skills that are very underrated until employers realize just how much they are necessary. Okay? But something else you can get at McDonald's is quick growth opportunity. They have a fairly moderate turnover, and if you do well at your job, you'll find yourself very quickly into a management position of some sort. Okay? And what does this mean? Well, the thing about management is, management experience is applicable to almost any, uh, any job you will have, okay? So, this is very important hands-on training to have, it's something you will most benefit from in the real world. Now, let me use a different example. Let's say... Let's say I've already decided at a young age that I want to weld for whatever reason. I know there are things that I can make as a welder. Let's say that's the reason, okay? But, while I feel like education would serve me well in welding and pursuing, say, certificates and such in welding, what is a way that I can get into welding? To welding for myself. I want all my own welding business. Well, what I should do is go work at several different places that hire welders once I've had an education in welding. I'll get the job as a welder. All right, and I'll work for say a few years, five years, six years, really learn as much as I can about welding. Okay, pursue higher education in welding, read up on the subject really study okay now the advantage of this is is I'm getting on the job train okay they're teaching me how to weld I'm getting a lot of experience in welding and especially if I go to different companies I learn different facets of welding like production welding and structural welding and stuff like that so that when I leave the uh, when I leave those companies behind and choose to forge my own path, I'll have a well-rounded understanding of welding. Now, by no means will that mean I know everything about welding, but it will mean that I know a lot about welding, far more than enough to own my own business. Okay. Now, if you are planning on forging your own path, there's some things you should remember. Managing a business is hard. If it were easy, everybody would be doing it. That's just a argument by comparison. But managing a business is difficult. There are a million and one things that will happen that are completely outside your control. There's literally nothing you can do about it that will bring your business down. Okay? What can you do about it? Well, first and foremost, what you need to do is learn how to manage money. Okay? Money is something your business has to have. So you have to make money. Okay? Money is not the means to an end. Unless it's the means to an end to you, you want to make money. But as a business, you have to make money. Unless you're a nonprofit. Okay? So, you have to make money. That's good. But you have to make good investments. Alright? 
And that's where managing money comes into play. You have to know when to spend money and when to save money. What kind of money to put aside and how much. What are your expenses and how much money do you think you need to have and reserve to keep your business afloat through the hard times? These are very hard questions to ask and even the experts get it wrong. Okay? This is going to vary from circumstance to circumstance because if you have 15 different welding organizations, all 15 of them have different people working for them. Okay? But therein lies the point. So, there are no easy answers for this, but that's the point. Business management, financial management, these are good areas to work on. If you don't already have a strong background in this, if you don't have a strong understanding of these two fields, these are some things you should clamp an eyeball on. If you're going to spend time in education and you want to work for yourself, have your own company, or at the very least, improve yourself as an individual, these are two things you need to know. So if you want to spend money on education, take classes in business management and financial management. Okay? But this is my point. So you can go to work for a organization and allow them to train you and educate you on the, your field of interest. I mean, this this is how people have done this for generations, really. You want to be a lawyer. You eventually want to open your own shingle. Well, it's kind of hard to be a lawyer with your own shingle when everybody finds out you're fresh out of law school. That's not to say it won't happen. You can very, be very charismatic and get lucky with your first couple of clients. That's fine. But... What's more likely to be successful is for you to go work in a law firm, do some grunt work, work your way up to where you're actually doing actual work, and then go out on your own. Especially if you go to work for a big law firm, you're going to be pushing back some money. And if you're managing your finances like you should, then when you go out on your own, you'll have a bit of a cushion. Which may or may not be a good thing. But I'll let you worry about why that might be the case. But in closing. What I hope to push here. Is the idea that if you want money. You have to have a desirable skill set. Whatever that skill set is. I will also point out that it is usually not only one skill, but several skills that make you most useful in a career. Okay? So, contemplate this. Welding. The term welder simply means someone who understands the basic tools and processes behind welding. That's why there's different qualifiers, such as structural welding, decorative welding, yeah. Nuclear core welding. These are designations by which what the welding is being used for. Okay. So I can understand how to weld. But that doesn't mean I'll understand how to build a structure with welding. I might be able to figure it out if I have a background in construction. But that end does not lie in the description of welding. Carpentry. Carpentry just means I know the basic tools and uh, processes behind working with wood. Now, am I doing rough carpentry? Am I doing framing? Am I doing fine carpentry? Cabinet and furniture making? As you can see, there might be a difference there. So it is my understanding of, say, welding, and then my understanding of construction, perhaps engineering, that allows me to be a structural welder. But then again, there are plenty of structural welders. 
So what are they looking for when they're trying to hire me? Can I work with other people? Am I easy to work with? Or can I be worked with? Can I manage a team of people? Can I be trusted with equipment? Do I have a driver's license? If you'll notice, two of the examples I gave are two of the examples I also gave of what you can learn by working at McDonald's. This is something that plenty of employers will look for when you're looking for a job. Can this person work with other people? Can this person be in charge of other people? Can I trust this person to manage an area? So yeah. Anyway, in closing, I hope I've given you something to think about today. And as such, hopefully you found something useful for yourselves. I have been greeted. Please have a nice day.